All right, we're about to watch Doug Bania, an intellectual property expert who previously testified on behalf of Johnny Depp. We're about to watch him basically wreck Amber Heard. Mr. Banya, um, before lunch, we were talking about your opinions in response to the testimony of Mr. Schnell. Did you also um, analyze the testimony of Ms. Arnold in this case? Yes, I did. And are you Oof. aware of her opinion that Ms. Heard's career would have followed the same trajectory as that of Jason Momoa, Gal Gadot, Zendaya, Ana de Armas, and Chris Pine, if not for the Waldman statements? Yes. What's your understanding of Ms. Arnold's basis um, for her opinion that Ms. Heard's career should have been similar to that of those identified actors? Um, Ms. Arnold uh, stated that when producers or her industry is looking to uh, hire uh, talent and actors, that it's important to best understand the, the public's perception of um, the actors that they're considering. Uh, and that it's important to you know, look into social media uh, to see b what what is happening with uh, the actors they're considering for either a movie or even a uh, an endorsement opportunity with companies. Um, so that that was her approach. And is that the process she followed in providing her analysis of those purportedly comparable actors? No. Although she stated that, she went in and uh, brought in these comparable, uh, alleged comparable actors and um, without really the reasoning behind that. Did you conduct an analysis based on your expertise in social media and internet analytics of Ms. Heard compared to the actors to whom Ms. Arnold um, compares her? I did. And what did you find? Let's go. Well, since uh, Ms. Arnold stated that the proper approach is looking at the public perspective, looking into social media, uh, and, and she did not do that, I felt that was the best approach to do this based on her her oh. words. So yes, I did go into Catherine. Um, you know, best felted. understanding the public perspective of um, Ms. Heard and the alleged comparable actors using Q scores. Then I also went and did some analysis on online and on social media as well. Can you briefly remind the jury what Q scores are? Yeah, again, Q scores uh, measure uh, how well a celebrity, it could be a, a cartoon character, it could be a sports person, how well they're known, how well they're liked, and how much they're disliked. And it's, it's an industry standard tool that's used. Uh, it's not just focused on the movies that they're in, but it's uh, focused on them as actors, uh, but also uh, what's happening in their personal lives uh, come to play as well. Uh, so that's how Q scores are typically used. Did you prepare a demonstrative that reflects the Q score analysis you completed? Yes, I did. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach again? All right, thank you. Let's go. Guys, this is going to be epic. Look, <laughs> look at Amber. She's mad. What do you think she's writing in her notepad there? Uh, post in the comments. Is she drawing? Is she actually taking notes? No objection to the demonstrative. All right, well, identify plaintiffs 1296 um, for identification and publish to the jury. Mr. Banya, what, what point in time do these Q scores represent that are reflected on your demonstrative? So this, uh, these are the winter 2019 Q scores um, that are reflected here. And what was important for me is I, I wanted to find Q scores uh, that oh. represented Miss Heard oh after Aquaman. God. And you know, remember Aquaman is December of 2018. These Q Ooh. scores were gathered January and February of 19, but before the Waltman statements. And what did you find based on the Q scores that you looked at? So as you see here on the left uh, are positive Q scores, and, and, and the higher the number, the better. Uh, as you can see, uh, you know, Ms. Godot uh, has the highest Q score out of the, out of the group of uh, actors here uh, at a 28. Uh, but you're going to notice Ms. Heard uh, has the lowest positive Q score. Uh, she has a 9. Uh, so I find that um, very interesting that if she doesn't, appear to fit in as a comparable with these alleged comparable actors. Um, I think what's also interesting is the average Q score oh, for all actors 
being scored at that time, which include uh, all the alleged comparable actors here, score uh, at an average of 17. And you can see, again, she is nine well below that. Dang. And then on the right side, you're going to see the negative Q scores. So this is uh, how much people dislike you. Um, you know, so the lower the score is better. Uh, you can see Mr. Momo is over here with the lowest at an eight, but you can see Ms. Hurd is over here at a 28, which is, was quite a difference. Uh, you know, a 20 point difference from Mr. Momoa, uh, and also a 10 point difference, uh, you know, from the average of all actors. So she is very, very much a little, uh, her positive score is very low and her negative score is, is very high. Uh, which tells me Mod that she does Mamoa. not fit in as a comparable as it relates to these alleged comparable actors. Um, what opinions did you form based on that Q-score analysis? Uh, my opinions as it relates to these Q-scores is, um, you know, uh, Ms. Arnold used uh, these uh, actors as allegedly comparable actors um, but really, listening to her testimony yesterday, it appears that she's abandoned this approach. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's using these comparable actors or these alleged comparable actors anymore. She's more relying on her um, experience, and I agree with that. Did Ms. Arnold offer a criticism of your use of the Q-scores here? She did, yes. And what's your understanding of what that criticism is? Well, what I believe she was saying is that I should have ran Q scores for these allegedly comparable actors after each of their breakout films, which um, I disagree. First of all, Q scores doesn't work like that. Q scores are available twice a year, so it's not that I could pick a month or a different month for each of, of, of Q score um, actors. Um, so I feel that, you know, what was important for me, and this doesn't always happen when, when I'm using Q scores, you can get this per perfect moment in time, as Miss Hurd said, I'm sorry, but as Miss Arnold said, that, you know, Aquaman was Miss Hurd's breakout moment. You know, mm -hmm. so these scores reflect that, that breakout moment, uh, and, and, and they're terrible Q scores. Yeah. How would your analysis change if you had used uh, Ms. Arnold's logic with respect to the, oh the timing of the Q scores that you looked at? Wrecked. I mean, if you really think about what uh, Ms. Arnold was saying, is she's saying that she thinks Q scores are the highest for each actor right after their breakout moment. So I would think, if anything, uh, these Q scores could have been a bit lower. Uh, because it's not right after their breakout moment. But what again, what's important for me is the fact that these scores reflect, you know, who H Amber Heard was at the time before the Waldman statements, but after the Aquaman release. Um, we can take that one down, Tom. Thank you. What other work have you done um, in connection with forming your opinions in this case? Um, again, taking the advice from Ms. Arnold, it's important. Uh, she says the industry looks into social media, uh, what their followings are like, uh, you know, with the numbers as it relates to their followers. Um, you know, again, what is the public perception of them? So I, I analyzed uh, their social media accounts, um, but prior to the, the Waldman statement. So, and how, how did you do that? Yeah, so what I did, I don't know if you're all familiar with the archive.org. Uh, they have a tool called the Wayback Machine. Yes. What archive.org does My is king. It, it archives the internet. So you can go back in time to see what websites and web pages used to look like uh, in the past. Uh, not all the time can you actually get a celebrity's social media accounts to have been archived, but... Uh, we were fortunate that each of the alleged comparable actors' social media accounts were in um, archive.org. So I was able to go back in time prior to the Waldman statements to see what, what the following activity was for each of the alleged comparable actors. Wow. Mr. Banya, did you prepare a demonstrative um, that def reflects your social media analysis? Yes. Your Honor, may I approach? Yes, ma'am. Oh, boy. This is going to be epic. Let's go. No objection to the demonstrative. 
All right, we'll mark it for identification purposes, plaintiffs 1297 and publish. Mr. Bynum, could you tell the jury what you found when you looked at the social media? Yeah, so what I found, again, this is prior to the Walden statements. You know, first thing you're going to notice here is not all actors use social media. You're going to see Mr. Pine uh, doesn't have Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Based. And Momo and Darmus don't use Facebook or Twitter. Uh, but what's important to look at is um, you have misheard prior to the Walden statements with 3.8 um, Instagram followers and 142,000 uh, 500 Twitter followers, Oof. and then you, you, you move down to uh, Gal Gadot uh, with 37 million Instagram followers compared to 3.8 million, oh. uh, and you know, uh, 2 million, 2.3 million uh, Twitter followers compared to Miss Heard's 142,000. And Damn. you can then even go down Weak. to Zendaya with 65 point. Uh, million point nine and seventeen point two million uh, Twitter followers. What this is telling me is really, you know, more people are interested in Miss Godot and Zendaya <laughs> and even uh, Mr. Momoa uh, than Miss Heard on social oh, media. It, it just tells me a lot. Oh, people are interested shit. in these uh, actors as opposed to Miss Heard. More oh, of a man. following. Q scores well liked, less disliked. So it kind of fits into the analysis of determining whether or not these alleged comparable actors are actually comparable. Damn, that's Based rough. Based on your expertise, what are your overall opinions about uh, Ms. Arnold's analysis of the so-called comparable actors? Yes, again, you know, it appears that she's abandoned this approach, but and I agree with that. I, I feel that you know, through the Q-score analysis and the uh, uh, social media analysis that they're just not comparable. Damn. So can take that one down. Mr. Banya, based on um, all the analysis you did in this case, what, what are your overall opinions? Yes, my overall opinions are that uh, Mr. Schnell failed to prove any causal connection with the Waldman statements and the uh, search or the uh, hashtag activity, those spikes as it relates to Twitter. There, there's no causal connection there. Um, my second opinion is, you know, based on my uh, social media and Q-score analysis, Miss um, Arnold's comparable, alleged comparable actors are not comparable. And then third, uh, Miss Arnold and Mr. Schnell both failed to prove any causation as it relates to the Waldman statements causing economic harm to Miss Heard. So, you know, as a damages expert, which um, uh, Miss Arnold is, uh, you, you need to take into consideration causation before you can calculate damages. Yep. You look at damages and you look at this allegedly damaging event, and not only do you have to prove that 100% of the damages because of these Waldman statements, she didn't even consider uh, COVID. It happened at the same time. Yes. You know, a lot of actors probably made a lot less money because of COVID. Maybe Boom. films didn't get Very made. good point. And, you know, when you do, do an analysis That's of right. damages, you prove causation, but you also have to look at everything else that might have caused this alleged economic yeah. harm. And she didn't look into any of that. She didn't even know what causation was. <laughs> so I don't think a damages is the, the appropriate shit. approach in this case. How are you a damages no expert? All right, cross-examination. Oh, God. Unbelievable, guys. Mr. Good afternoon, Mr. Banyan. Hi. Yeah, you're not a damages expert, correct? I am a damages expert, but not providing any quantitative damages uh, opinions in this case. In this case, okay. And is it your testimony that only if a person repeats the Waldman Depp statements could they be related to the defamation? What? Say that one more time. Are you saying that a person literally has to repeat the Waldman Depp statements in a tw in a tweet for them to be related to the defamation? Uh, no. If you looked at my analysis, I did pick the three themes as it relates to the tweets, and I uh, analyzed those themes, and I came up with five examples of when th those themes were used. And you ran searches for quote abuse hoax, sexual violence hoax, and fake sexual violence. And you ran all those in quotes, correct? I did. So only if a person used a tweet with those words in that order 
And with that spacing, would they hit on your searches, correct? Objection compound. Overruled. Yeah, so I used them in quotes because, you know, the hoax could be used in many other contexts. So exactly. I wanted to make sure it. I was fitting my search with the theme of the Walden statements. So if someone tweeted misheard faked sexual violence, that wouldn't appear in your that wouldn't appear in your searches, correct? Faked with an ED. Uh, it would not. Okay. And any and if they use two spaces between abuse and hoax, that wouldn't fit in your search. That's correct. <clears throat> Did you, and a, tweet's 200 and a tweet can only be 280 characters, correct? That's correct. All right. So certain of the Waldman Depp uh, statements, a person could not tweet the whole thing in one tweet, correct? What? The whole statement in one tweet. The Waldman statements? Correct. Um, no, you, you could not uh, okay. tweet that in those entire What quotes. does that matter? Did you make any determination if there was an online bullying campaign against Mr. Depp after Ms. Hurd's op-ed? I didn't look into any uh, online bullying campaign for Ms. Hurd nor Ms. Mr. Depp. Did you determine if there were tweets harassing Mr. Depp that quoted from Ms. Hurd's op-ed? No, my assignment was to determine if the Waldman statements were part of the, the, the tweets that Mr. Schnell provided. I was, I was rebutting him. And in your analysis of when you, when you testified before, you never looked to see if the op-ed was quoted anywhere, correct? That wasn't what he was hired for. Objection, Your Honor. May we approach? <laughs> Look at, oh, my All right, God. Questions withdrawn. Next question. He knows what he's doing. Um, now... Some real scumbag stuff. You have stuff. no objection to Miss Arnold's use of comparables, correct? What? Just the use of comparables in general. I listened to her testimony and my understanding that she abandoned that, uh, uh, that approach. But as it relates to my testimony today, uh, my opinion the was related to those death specific death alleged what is comparable this? actors. What is she doing? You're not offering an opinion as to who the appropriate comparables what should be to Miss Hurd, correct? Correct. She's okay. looking into your soul. And um, this is fucking. You crazy. you testified just before about the Q scores of Miss Hurd and, and the comparables. That was uh, plaintiff's exhibit twelve ninety six, correct? I don't know what. Uh, 1296 means. She's violating okay. me again. The, the, the demonstrative in front of M you. Mine? Yes, that's correct. Um, and you said that those were all for the winter of 2019? I said Miss Hurd's were from the winter of 2019. Because isn't it true that none of the rest of these people were from the winter of 2019, correct? That's correct. Okay. In fact, uh, Mr. Momoa's was from the summer of, tw of 2020. Of 2020? That's correct. Not all alleged comparable actors had Q scores for that date. What was important for me is to get Ms. Hurd's Q scores right after Aquaman, but before the Waldman statements. So you weren't comparing apples to apples, correct? I, I wouldn't say that. I I'm saying that it's not the exact same years. Well, so in the winter of 2019, that Q score comes out that the field date, the field work dates for that is from January 22nd, 2019 to February 7th, 2019, correct? That is correct. So that would be start. So the field work would be starting almost Im immediately after Aquaman just came out, correct? Yeah. And her star is born moment. Yes. You'd agree that for the winter of 2020, where you took Jason Momoa's oh, Q God. score would have more time to account for the rise in popularity of the film Aquaman, correct? Well, actually, if I use Miss Arnold's suggestion, uh, the, <laughs> these celebrities tend to have, you know, the, the, the celebrity moment right after they have their breakout oh, film. God. So uh, I disagree with that. I think maybe his Q scores could be lower as it relates to when I use them. You'd agree that Oof. for the winter of 2020, Mr. M Momoa's Q score would have more time to account for the rise in popularity of the film Aquaman. I don't know if it accounts for the rise of popularity. Again, using Ms. Arnold's uh, words, uh, usually a Q score will be the, the highest after, right after the film, like I did measure Ms. Hurd. May I approach her? All right. Do you show her? 
She is Thank you. mad. Guys, if Rotten Porn shows up with a black eye, you know who did it. <laughs> if you if you look on page 177 of your deposition transcript, you see that? I don't see a page of that, but you handed me. You don't see page 177? Um, I think four pages. Four pages per. This guy oh, yes, has thank a bad you. attitude. And I asked you... At line six through ten, you'd agree that for the winter of 2020, Jason Momoa's Q score would have more time to account for the rise of popularity in the film Aquaman, and you answered yes. Uh, at that time, as I am a rebuttal expert to Ms. He's Arnold, based on her testimony, I learned something said. new from her. You did, and you didn't look at Ms. Hurd's Q score for summer of 2020, correct? She doesn't have any. And Ms. Armis had a lower lower familiarity score than Ms. Hurd, correct? Um, if I don't have that in front of me, but if you're saying that, yes. Okay. And Ms. Armis' tra career tra trajectory has gone up since the summer of 2020, correct? Yeah, because people like her. I, I don't know. I didn't analyze her career trajectory. Okay. Um, could we... Could you put up plain, uh, trial exhibit 1297? That was the demonstrative. Camille M looking Mr. nice Armis today. Has less Instagram followers than Miss Hurd, correct? Correct. And by Miss Hurd has more than double the Instagram followers of Mr. Armis, correct? Yes. And isn't it true that you get more social media followers the longer you're on social media? Uh, not necessarily. It, it yeah, doesn't not work necessarily. that way. It, it depends on many other factors. And, and so Mr. Armis had a lower familiarity score and less Instagram followers, yet your testimony is that she would not be a proper comparable to Miss Hurd? That's correct. Okay. She's you're actually not talented. A different set of people who should be comparable is correct. That's, That's not correct. my job. Thank you. Thank you. That was your expert's job. That's it. Now, you understand that Mr. Waldman has been banned from Twitter for life for harassing so? Amber Heard, correct? I, I don't know that, uh, but if that's the case. And you understand that Mr. Waldman appealed a decision to Twitter and they- Twitter's a bunch of SJWs. For life. Confirmed Objection, NPCs. May we approach on this one? Okay, sure. That again, it has nothing to do with the data he has shown. This is such a weak argument. What they're trying to do is, you know, just twist things, try to make, you know, these statements that they know are bullshit, but slip them in like that. Absolutely ridiculous. You agree that in looking at Mr. Schnell's data, 65% of the uses of negative hashtags relating to Ms. Heard occurred between April 1st, 2020 and June 15th, 2021, correct? Correct. Okay. And you would agree that five of the six highest spikes of the negative hashtags were after the Deb Waldman statements, correct? Correct. Okay. And where you talked about the February 2020 spike, and the 65%, by the way, even includes the February 2020 spike of tweets, correct? That's correct. But, well, there was no spike in Feb 2020 during the Waldman statements. Well, <laughs> the, the spike in February 2020 was before the Waldman statements, right? What? I would have you, can we pull up the chart again if you want to talk about the spikes? Sure. Can you put up 1294? Number one. Number one. Yeah, that spike happened before the Waldman statements. Okay. And there was hardly any activity in negative hashtags until February 2020, correct? That's correct. 
And you understand that the spike in February 2020 was related to the partial tape that Mr. Waldman and Mr. Depp leaked to the Daily Mail, right? I'm aware that the articles were related to um, Heard admitting to hitting Depp. And you understand that Mr. Waldman testified that Mr. Depp and Mr. Waldman met with the Daily Mail in person to provide the partial tape to the Daily Mail. Objection, Your Honor. Okay, she's talking about... He talked about what's, what the number one what, related to. What's the objection? Sorry, lack of foundation. And I'm asking. I'm asking if he knows if he knows or he doesn't. All right, uh, we'll rule. So what's important to me is the fact that this spike is I, I, prior to sir, the sir, statements. Uh, do you know if this? Do you know if Mr. Waldman testified that Mr. Depp and he met with the Daily Mail in person to provide the partial tape? No. In February of 2020, you don't know one way or the it's other. It's irrelevant to my opinion. Okay. And the spike oh. in July of 2020 came right after the last defamatory statement by Mr. Depp and Mr. Waldman, correct? They're calling it defamatory, but truth is truth. Uh, the July spike, which is number two, uh, is not related to the Waldman statements, and it, uh, there are articles related to abuse between Heard and Depp and feces found in Depp's bed. And that's based on Google searches you did? That's correct. Okay. And the July, but the July spike in time came after the June 27th 2020 defamatory statement by Mr. Depp and Mr. Waldman, correct? That's correct. Okay. And as, and five of the six spikes came after the defamatory statements, correct? After the Waldman statements, yes. Okay. <laughs> He's not now, calling them defamatory. He's saying Waldman, that yes. You eliminated I bet you love to see it. Shares and likes of the Depp Waldman statements from your analysis, right? <gasps> Repeat that, please. Did you say that you eliminated shares and likes of tweets that included the Depp Waldman statements? That's correct. When I was doing my analysis, I noticed the exact same text was a part of many of these tweets. Don't, don't shares and likes disseminate the negative information? That's quite possible. Okay. What? And you agree, right, that use of the term Waldman or Waldmanian occurred over 25% of the time in the negative tweets toward Ms. Heard from April 2020 through January 2021, correct? Although it's irrelevant to this case, it has nothing to do with the Waldman statements. That's what Mr. <laughs> Schnell says. You don't disagree with his, you don't disagree with the search results, correct? Yeah, although has nothing to do with this case or the Waldman statements, I do not disagree. So if people oh my are tweeting God. about Adam Waldman, and, or Wald Minion at the same time as tweeting negative hashtags, hashtags about Amber Heard, that has, it's your testimony that they have nothing to do with this case? The hashtags have nothing to do with this case. It, that's, that's what you're saying? Okay. Uh, what, yeah. Okay. And even if they include the negative hashtags with Walt, Mr. Waldman's name and Wald Minion, you're saying they have nothing to do with the defamatory statements? All four hashtags that Snell used had nothing to do with the Waldman statements. I, I, Waldman himself has nothing to do with the Waldman statements. We're talking about the Waldman statements here. Oof. Wald Minion, I don't even know what that is, but again, it has nothing to do with this case, and it's not related to the, the Waldman statements. That's and, what's and, important. And the reason you're saying they're not related to the Waldman statements is because someone didn't literally copy what Adam Waldman said in the Daily Mail and tweeted out? Well, I looked at, at enough tweets that included the name Waldman that have nothing to do with anything negative or the Waldman statement. No, they must, have, mean, had Mr. To, they must have had to have the negative hashtags toward Ms. Heard because the only way that those would have been in the data you looked at would have had the negative hashtags towards Ms. Heard. It, he wasn't look, he, it was looking at that universe, correct? Well, first of all, I don't agree that the uh, justice for Johnny Depp is a negative hashtag towards Amber Heard. Right. So, listen, the assignment was to determine if the tweets that Mr. Schnell presented were related or included the Waldman statements. In your review of the tweets related to Ms. Heard, you cannot point to any that were positive toward Ms. Heard, correct? Again, I was not looking That's for not that. That's not what he was looking for. And you for. did not review the hashtag Johnny justice for Johnny Depp during the time frame from April 1st, 2020 to January 1st, 2020 to see if there were any that were not negative toward Ms. Hurt. Again, I did not that wasn't part of look his into assignment. anything as it relates to anything other than what relates to the Waldman statements. That's what's at issue here today as we sit in court. <laughs> okay. 
And you exactly. didn't form any statistical analysis to rule saying... out the Waldman statement's impact on the hashtags, correct? Oh, correct. You did not analyze whether media and press coverage other than the Waldman statements affected Ms. Hurd's career, correct? Correct. Okay. Looking at um, the exhibit in, that's in front of you, where you have the numbers here, those you said are related to Google, Google searches? The, the one through six? Correct. Yes. Okay. And can we put up um, plaintiff's 888? And we could just start at one. Do you understand that your... Okay. <laughs> oh, thanks. And 888, it's page 76. These are the documents you relied upon for your opinion today? Yes. And are these the search, the, where it has the different letters, these are the searches uh, that you ran for the various time frames and the articles that came up for numbers one through six, correct? No, I mean, obviously document 1A is the Heard Supplemental Expert Witness Disclosure. These are, these are documents that I used throughout the time I've been working on this project. So not, these aren't related to those one through six numbers. Okay. These are documents you relied upon for your opinion today? These are the documents that I relied upon when I presented my, my designation. The, for, the, for, your opinion, for your opinion today, that you're offering today? Yeah, these are the documents that, yes, I've relied on throughout this entire, this case. Okay. And actually, Michelle, if could you turn in this designation to... Um, Come on, guy. Let's Get it see. together. Uh, hold on one second. Oh, come on. You're supposed to be prepared. Go. To, can you just scroll down? <laughs> yeah, I keep scrolling. Let's keep going. Okay. Come on. Let's go. Time is a wasting, bucko. Okay, stop. This was the chart you provided with your designation for your opinions in this case, correct? Yes. Okay. And it's it's similar to the chart that we had before that we had before with the one through six, correct? That's correct. And where it has the various boxes, it's talking about documents. 6E through 6H, for instance, related to Depp wanting to have Heard replaced on Aquaman. You see yes. That? And you, you prepared this chart, correct? Yeah, this was part of my designation. I'd like to have this page um, as a demonstrative. Your Honor, I do have an objection, if I might be heard. All right, if you want to come forward, page 99. Come on. <laughs> okay, so this has been absolutely ridiculous. Um, I don't like, I don't think anybody likes this lawyer uh, that is on Amber Heard's team. I don't even remember his name, but I don't think he's doing a particularly good job. I think his demeanor does not come off as somebody that is pleasant to be around. Mr. Banya, um, other than uh, come on, get it together, man.
So as I understand it, your, the way you determined that the tweets were not related to the Waldman statements was that you looked at time and then you ran certain Google searches, correct? Correct. And then the top three hits came up. Correct. And you were, and then you looked through the article to see if the Waldman statements were there? So as it relates to any trending event, any defamation that's happened online, any allegations of, of, of economic loss because something went viral, going to Google, looking at the spikes in time and going back in time to see what was happening on those top three sites will give you an indication of, of the best results that were being served at that time. So something viral that's happening would appear most likely in those top three results. And just so the record's clear, if we could put, go back to page 76 of this document. Numbers 6A through 6N going to the next page, those are the, those are the headlines of the searches that you found? Correct. And you, you don't disagree that the ne that negative tweets toward Ms. Heard have continued throughout your throughout the analysis of the tweets, correct? What? I'm not looking at whether they're negative tweets or those hashtags are negative. I'm determining if those tweets are related to the Waldman statements. Well, okay, and you and you haven't there's not you have no he knows so you that. have no opinion whether the tweets were ne positive or negative. That's not Ms. what that's his what, job is. Yes, I'm just analyzing whether or not they're related okay. to the Waldman statements. Okay. Oh. Thank you, nothing further. Yeah, because you had nothing. Unbelievably stupid. I have no further questions of this witness, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Banya. Yes. Thank you. That was so weak. That was so pathetic. They had nothing on this guy. They could not impeach him as a witness. How embarrassing.